Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at expressions. We're going to talk about the order of operations, solving numeric expressions, and then writing or reading variable expressions. So a couple different types of expressions, and we need to know order of operations to get into either of them. So let's get started. The order of operations. Now this is not a full lesson on the order of operations, it's just the basics um, that we are going to go over here pretty quickly. One is that we often see them written with a P standing for parentheses, an E for exponents, M and D for multiplication and division, and then A and S for addition subtraction. Um, I would encourage you to write it in this way, where the multiplication and division are viewed as one step and the addition subtraction are viewed as one step. We do go through this process from left to right. Parentheses first, then we solve exponents, then we do multiplication, division in one step, then we move on to addition, subtraction, and another step. And that's important. We don't always do the multiplication before the division, <clears throat> nor do we do the um, subtraction always after the addition. Um, it's in whatever order it comes from left to right in one step. <clears throat> All right, let me show you a couple examples here and why the order matters when we're solving things. So in our first example here on the left, we have 15 divided by 5 minus 2 times 1 plus 3. If we're using the correct order of operations, there are no parentheses or exponents in this first expression. So we will move on to doing multiplication and division in the order they appear from left to right. So the first thing we're going to do is 15 divided by 5, which gives us 3. Notice we did not do multiplication first. We did the division first because it comes first left to right. Now we will do our multiplication. 2 times 1 is 2. And now we're moving on. We've finished all of our parentheses, all the exponents. We've finished all of the multiplication and division. So now we're moving on to solving the addition and subtraction in the order they appear from left to right. Notice the subtraction comes first. And I did this on purpose because so many people think that addition has to come first. The answer will be wrong if you add before you subtract. So. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. And that is the correct order of operations. Now, in the second question, I've gone ahead and added in some parentheses there just to um, give us a little bit of variety. Same numbers um, in that order um, that we have, but I uh, just wanted to, um, to change things up a bit. So if I wanted to do subtraction or addition before I do my multiplication or division, then I would need to put parentheses in, which I've done. So in this case, it would be 5 minus 2 gets done first. 5 minus 2 is 3. Notice everything else stays the same. And now that we've gotten rid of the parentheses because we solved what was inside of them, now we move on. There are no exponents. So now we will do our multiplication or division from left to right. 15 divided by 3 is 5, then we do our multiplication, 5 times 1 is 5, and then we do our final step of adding 5 plus 3 is 8. So you notice we, same numbers, but we'll get a different answer if we add those parentheses in. The order of operations are important that we follow. I don't have any practice problems with order of operations, and if you want a full lesson, then please check out the channel and go to the full lesson on order of operations. I just wanted to do a quick recap. Now we're going to solve numeric expressions. When we're solving numeric expressions, we always follow the order of operations, which is why we went over it. Um, so numeric expressions are, look like this. Here's an example of a numeric expression. It's a math problem with numbers. There's another numeric expression. There's another numeric expression. Numeric expression is just a fancy way to say math operations with numbers. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. When you have them written out, exponents, parentheses. When you have them written out with numbers only and operations, it's a numeric expression. And when we solve numeric expressions, you always use the order of operations. So let's look at the three that were on the board there. 3 plus 4, a very simple, basic, one-step operation 
Um, here's a numeric expression. Go ahead and solve that one. 3 plus 4 is 7, right? It was pretty straightforward to solve that one. I'm going to add in one more step here. Um, 3 plus 4 divided by 7. Go ahead and solve that one. This one here is a little bit more complicated because it has a fraction. A fraction bar, although it's not written into this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or the order of operations we see here. This fraction bar is an implied parentheses. In other words, it's an implied grouping symbol. Everything on the top gets done first, and that, or on the bottom, they get done separate, and then you do the division afterwards. So when we're solving this, we do 3 plus 4, which is 7, and then we would do 7 divided by 7, which gives us our answer of 1. All right, our final numeric expression, a little bit more complicated. Um, just adding one more operation onto it. 3 plus 4 divided by 7 plus 15. So we are going to start out by solving this section up here. It's it's like I said, it's like it's grouping symbols. Because it's in the top of a fraction, or if it's in the bottom of a fraction, you need to solve that first. Simplify it down. Now we have 7 divided by 7 plus 15. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and when we add 15, we get a total of 16. So that's the way we would solve this following the order of operations. Now it's your turn. I have a question for you I'd like you to solve. 4 plus 4 over 7 minus 3 minus 2. Go ahead and pause the recording and solve that one following the order of operations. So your first step you should have, and you can do this all in one step, 4 plus 4 is 8 and 7 minus 3 is 4. You could do this in two steps if you wanted. First doing 4 plus 4 is 8, second 7 minus 3 is 4. Either way is fine, but you simplify the top and bottom as if there are grouping symbols around them, like parentheses around the top and bottom. Now we're going to do our division. 8 divided by 4 gives us 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So we're able to solve this one using the order of operations. Was that the answer that you got when you solved it? I hope so. If not, go back and look where w the steps that I did and see where you might have made a mistake. Now let's talk about variable expressions. A variable is a letter that stands in place of a number. This messes people up bad when you come into math and you have to deal with reading. Um, it kind of uses two parts of our brain at the same time. But a variable, it just means that that letter is standing in place of a number. So here are several examples. Um, here's an example, 2 plus n. That's 2 plus a number. 20 divided by n. 20 divided by a number. n minus 3. That's a number minus 3. Or 5n. This one's probably the most tricky because you don't see an operation written there. But when two things are, two terms are put together into one term like this, and there's no operation in between them, it's an implied multiplication. So that means five times a number written that way. What we're going to do today, we're not going to solve variable expressions, but we're going to talk about reading and writing variable expressions. So first off, we'll, we'll look at addition. Think of two ways to say this. n plus 2. Just think of two ways to say that, that a number is being added to 2. All right. Um, perhaps you thought a number increased by 2. Maybe I took, I said one right away. I said n plus 2 when I, when I wrote it down. All right, maybe we said n plus 2. Or 2 more than a number. Remember, n is just representing a number. We don't know what number it is, so we can say 2 greater than a number. Or the sum of a number and 2. There's lots of ways to say this expression of n plus 2. And that all represents addition. We often see these terms greater than, more than, the sum, increased, plus. Um, any of those indicate that we're talking about addition. 
Subtraction is our next operation. I want you to again pause the recording. Try and think of two ways to, to say this expression here. Perhaps some of them that you came up with, a number decreased by 2. n minus 2. 2 less than a number. 2 fewer than a number. The difference between a, the difference between of a number and 2, <laughs> obviously typo there. The difference between a number and 2 is what that's supposed to say. There, now it's fixed. All right, so the difference between a number and 2. And the word difference um, is a good indication that you're using subtraction. But all of these are ways that we can express the operation of subtraction. Oh, there, n take away 2, another one. Um, division is something that looks like this. I'm trying not to say anything that might give it away. But think of a way to say this. I'm not going to ask for two ways because there are less ways to say this expression. Hopefully you're back. Maybe you said a number divided into four equal groups. When we're talking about equal groups, then you're talking about division. Maybe you just said n divided by 4. It's probably the, the most common way to say this. The quotient of n and 4, quotient is definitely a term connected with division. So we have a couple of different ways to say this expression. And maybe you came up with some others of your own. As long as it's talking about dividing into equal groups, n divided by 4, the quotient. Um, these are great terms to help us remember that we're doing division. And the last one, we are running way over time on this. It's not so many of a lesson. Multiplication. Think of a way to say this. Pause the recording and then come back. Hi, welcome back. 5 multiplied times a number. 5 times n. The product of n and 5. 5 groups of a number. The word of often is connected with multiplication, um, especially with fractions like half of 14 would mean 1 half times 14. But the word of is often connected to multiplication as well. So just some things to think about. We talked about order of operations. We used order of operations to solve numeric expressions. And then we briefly talked about reading and writing with variable expressions. I hope that that was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.